Hello, uh, Alison. Uh, how are you doing there? Good, thank you. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. So we're live, um, and we should be going out on Facebook and on YouTube as well. Um, and yeah, this is a chat with Alison Jacobs, who I've known for quite a few years. We were chatting earlier on, weren't we, Alison? And we think it's been six or seven years. I think we first met, we were shooting a film somewhere in Bridgewater, um, something like that. And it was probably about using film uh, to help promote yourself as an artist or something. But it was a Somerset film, Ignite Somerset Activity. So for those of you that don't know, um, Ignite Somerset is a project that's managed by Somerset Film and funded by Arts Council England. And the basic idea is that we uh, collaborate, team up with artists in Somerset and we explore creative digital technology together. So um, recently um, all of our creative networks have been online like this, going out on Facebook and YouTube. And um, hello Tracy, hello Steve. And um, we've got some regulars joining us online. In the normal way, we would have been doing this at the engine room uh, in Bridgewater, home to Somerset film. Um, but for obvious reasons that we don't go in, need to go into right now, uh, we're doing this all online. And it's proving to be uh, quite an interesting way of working. So um, the usual format is that Alison will show us a few images. Um, and hello, Fiona. And hello, Mike. And you've got a big audience here, uh, <laughs> Alison. So, uh, yeah, the normal format is that we uh, take a look at some of the artist's work. Um, Alison is with us today. And Alison's going to share a few images from a project all about Stolford. Um, but she'll go into more detail. And there's some video as well. And then we've got some um, a little bit of a Q&A at the end and if you've got any questions you'd like to ask Alison then just put them in the comments and um, I'll ask um, and uh, so shall, you've got a lot of images that you want to show Alison so shall we um, just crack on with this um, I love the image behind you that is just amazing that is a great backdrop you've got there I like the fact, Alison, also that it's an actual painting. It's not a green screen or anything, is it? It's, it's, it's a physical thing. <laughs> okay, so um, let's have a look at uh, what we're looking at here. So how are Somerset artists focusing their attention on developing new ideas in response to the anxiety caused by the current lockdown? So here we are with Alison today and she's going to tell us about a particular project that she's been working on. Hello Elisa. Uh, so um, are you ready to start Alison? Yep. That's a thumbs up from Alison. So um, let's uh, take one last look at Alison. So we're about to have a look at some of your images. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I'll tell you what, shall I get rid of myself? There you go. Um, yeah, so this is about my um, Stolford weather report project, um, which has been the project that's kept me going um, through this lockdown period. Um, it was it was never planned. It's just what's kind of happened. Um, so if we go to the next stage, sorry, next slide even. <laughs> <laughs> and there I am out on one of my walks, and um, I quite like the fact that on my walk I have. Um, a signpost that says alternative footpath. Which, um, <laughs> <laughs> that made me chuckle. Yeah. Um, so who am I? Well, I'm um, an artist based in Somerset. Um, uh, I'm also a graphic designer, an illustrator and a geographer. So at various points in my life, um, I have been these things, but I feel like I'm a, an amalgam of them all now. Mm -hmm. And as well as all those things, I, I love the great outdoors. So um, I feel incredibly lucky and privileged that um, during this lockdown period, I've been able to um, have these walks and be outside, um, mm -hmm. not trapped in a tower box somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, so if we go to the next slide. Uh, sorry, sis. of <laughs> 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 uh, me and my sister. So this is to explain how I ended up here. So my weather report's based in Stolford. Stolford is um, a little village um, nearest to um, Hinkley Point, which is a nuclear power station. Um, and we moved down here um, in the 70s. Uh, but, um, yeah, so Dad moved us here in the, the 70s for, for, to work at the power station. So, um, so not for us to work at the power station, I hasten to add, um, even though we do look like some kind of dodgy, um, creepy salespeople here trying to sell you um, <laughs> a nuclear um, uh, lorry. Um, but anyway, it, it kind of, um, it's of its, of its time. Um, so uh, the, the power station was much more open in the old days and had open days and... Um, and there's much more linked into the community somehow, I think. Um, and uh, so so we grew up with it and we are um, familiar neighbours with the power station. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's how we began. So if we go to the next slide, please. Um, and this is a project I did when I studied graphics at um, Somerset College of Arts and Technology. Um, and we were we had to make um, uh, or construct an image um, using uh, recycled objects, um, the rubbish basically, and um, and it was to be an environmentally themed um, advertising campaign. And um, so I came up with the rather cheesy idea of making a anemometer, which is a, a, a machine that measures wind speed. Um, with tins of baked beans, um, <laughs> wind joke there. <laughs> um, so it's kind of my my um, ideas of um, environment and uh, weather. Um, so, uh, oh, crikey, I'm not sure about that slide at this point. But anyway, this this is um, a drawing of Kill Beach I did um, when I was at school. Um, under the tutelage of um, John Wealthy. So this is a project we did at school and um, I kind of naturally fell into this project and loved it. Um, and there's a beach that I visit regularly. Um, next slide. Aha, right. So, um, so after school and um, uh, studying graphics, um, I managed to escape. Somerset and um, I went to the Big Smoke and um, was a graphic designer um, and I designed food packaging of a very unhealthy nature. Um, so, uh, so that's what I did to earn some dosh um, back in the late 90s. I was. Uh, next slide. Um, so I got bored of graphics and, um, well, no, I love graphics, I still love graphics, but I got bored of um, commercial graphics and um, I decided I did quite like art after all and I started painting and um, I painted um, a lot of cows uh, quite obsessively for 10 years. Um, so my first art collaboration um, came out of this. So um, this is... Uh, my studio set up ready for art week so i got involved with um somerset art week uh, i think i did my first one in 2006 um and uh yeah to to uh, exhibit my paintings and it was just through art week I, I met my first gallery um and they took me on um and uh and i won um the painting award for one of the big paintings i did one of the big cow paintings so um yeah, totally mad about cows. <laughs> um, and um, so, can we go to the next slide, please? So, uh, this is uh, my first collaboration um, with uh, artists Jane Kelly, Eddie Coy, and Alan Smithy. And we joined together for Art Week um, to do something a bit more experimental. 
So my painting did feature in it, but the, the main focus was um, our art cinema caravan, or the Cine Moon, as we, <laughs> we um, nicknamed it. Um, and we showed, um, we had slideshows and art films and um, proper cinema seats in there. And um, you could only fit six people in at a time. Um, I think the uh, running time of the films was probably about six minutes and um, people queued up outside and um, then were shown to their seats by a beautiful usheress with a torch and um, minutes, we did miniature popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> and we embraced the whole thing of it being a performance as well. And it was a lot of fun and um, uh, it's talked about till this day. Um, so next slide please. Ah, yeah. So um, whilst I was living out at Steart, which is down the coast from um, Stolford, um, this is where I live by cow paintings, lived out at Steart for 10 years. Um, and uh, yeah, extraordinary place and um, experienced quite a lot of weather there. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, who needs a residency in Antarctica when you can uh, live out at Steart? <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so I experienced... Um, this dip peninsula and the weather uh, firsthand, and it was extremely windy out there. We lost the slideshow there. Um, so I just paddle on then. No, we got now. Mm. Ah, yeah. So lots of photography, as well as I was still painting at the time, but I'd always go out regularly walking around the peninsula and taking lots of um, uh, photographs. And this is one of my very windy photographs. Uh, so yeah, getting very excited about the weather. Uh, <laughs> next slide, please. And this one, I got all telly. Um, <laughs> this is a, a funnel cloud, which I could see from um, my studio. And um, yes, very excited to <laughs> set it into points, points west thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was a bit of a thrill. Um, but yeah, photographs like this quite often were just kind of um, almost like a documentary. Um, uh, but it's just it's just like a habit really because so I always am taking photographs um, mm. I never considered it my arts practice my art, actual art it was just something I did to um, reference for my art um, so next slide please and so I'd also do what I would think would be more artful photography um, and um, then looking back, what's been interesting looking back through my photographs is, is that seeing themes are kind of reoccurring. And um, I do like poles and things that are totem like and um, uh, landmarks that aren't your normal kind of landmarks. They're mm -hmm. landmarks to me, they might not necessarily be to other people. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was interesting. I like to photograph things like this um, bit of rusty fence post. What's also interesting is all of these fence posts um, were taken out and replaced by a very boring new fence. Um, <laughs> so I'm really glad I recorded these. Um, so, uh, yeah, next next slide, please. And this is my first um, foray into iPad art. So um, saw the Hockney exhibition, The Bigger Picture, and got an iPad and started um, experimenting with iPad art. And, um, and this was done on the scene, just around the corner from Stolford at Steer. Um, and um, I, I got pretty hooked on it. I loved it. Um, so next slide, please. And um, yeah, so this is my very first photograph of Tackle Shade. Um, and uh, I was living in Steer, but some of my longer walks used to take me out to Stolford. And um, I, no I noticed them then and thought they were interesting and photogenic. And um, so I, I photographed them. And, um, and they, I, I've got the, um, I Instagrammed that one and I've got a printout of it. And the print was shown at um, the Mud Horse exhibition in the caravan. Mm. Um, I think that was about 2009. Um, so that was the start of my little interest in them. Uh, so next project, please. Next slide, please. 
Uh, yeah, so I also, again, the totem, the, the landmark object photographing, um, um, there's loads of pylons around here. Um, these particular ones, um, there's two that span the River Parrot, and when they were built, they were the biggest pylons in the country, and um, they are a landmark. Um, they always used, we always used to walk to them as children, um, uh, in all weathers, uh, <laughs> mum was a great one for saying, come on, go and get some fresh air before tea or whatever, off you go, go for a walk. So it, we walked the pylon back. And um, this pylon, uh, I photographed, photographed it now. Ooh. I don't know how long, uh, maybe 10 years. And I always photograph the bottom section and I photograph the triangle that the legs make. Um, and the reason I did that was uh, because of um, the pyramid stage at Glastonbury Festival is based on the dimensions of a pylon because there's a pylon in the field of Glastonbury. Mm. Oh, that's a really nice, mm -hmm. kind of mm. neat, um, kind of cosmic, kind of nice uh, proportion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a really nice frame for the picture. So if you go to the next slide, well, actually, the, the, I made it into a film, so I, yeah. I um, overlaid them and did like a stop frame. Yeah. So the next slide is that. Well, it's not a slide, actually, sorry. It's, it's a little video. So I'm, just, I'm just going to break for just a few seconds, just so we can see, yeah. you, see you again, Alison. Um, uh, we're getting some really interesting feedback. You've got a lot of um, uh, people in your audience here, which is pretty good, uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, and uh, yeah, you're competing with the birds a little bit, but um, but we can hear you loud and clear. So, <laughs> so um, do you need me to project more? Um, I can't uh, hear you. Well, um, I think I think it's sounding okay to me. Uh, but yeah, perhaps just speak up a little bit if you want to. What you'll probably find is that uh, as you start to speak up, the um, the birds will also raise their volume, so let's just see how it goes. But really fascinating, and uh, we're getting some interesting comments here. So I'll um, I'll uh, start your videos now, I think, um, if that works for you. Um, and uh, you might want to speak over the top of these, Alison, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, if I can hide that. Sorry, I might play this again. Mess that one up a little bit. Just hang on a sec. Yeah, they're, they're all very short. But this one, um, when, when you start seeing it um, sequenced like this, is that you do start seeing things you don't normally see. So you can see the river going up and down. Mm. Um, you can see the, the scaffolding going up and down the church spire and the, the plants changing. Um, and then you become more aware of the, the seasons and... Um, the pulse of life, really, which I, which I, I, I love. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I really enjoyed doing that. But what was fascinating when I went through the archive to get the photographs is actually the um, the grid of um, original photographs, I actually think is better. <laughs> um, as much as I love this, um, I, I'm liking the repetitiveness of the grid of photographs from before. Yeah. yeah. Um, Right, so, I go so that project's ongoing. That's never, I don't know whether it will finish or not. But I'm still photographing that pylon. Um, okay. So. okay, so maybe have the next slide, please. Okay, uh, which is this one. Um, yeah, so um, my studio at Steart, um we have a shared and we made it look like Prospect Cottage, which is Derek Jarman's um, little house um, at Dungeness. So it was a little nod to that, the Dungeness next to the power station. Mm. Um, and we like playing with that idea. And um, this is with you through the reversing camera of um, my parents' motorhome. And um, I like the way it's it's um, like a fisheye lens, and it's distorted the image, and also black and white. So it, it's um, even now, now we don't live there anymore. Um, it uh, looks more nostalgic, and I, I like I like the idea of looking through different types of lenses to um, explore different ways of seeing. 
Um, so I thought that was an interesting image. So next slide, please. Yeah, so total change. Um, I moved down, or um, no, I didn't move down. I, I got involved with um, the artists at Watch It. So that's Watch It further down the coast, um, the other side of the Quantock Hills. Um, and uh, I, I found that I was too isolated at Steert. And um, there's a really great network of um, uh, very interesting artists who had um, ideas that interested me. So I went down there and um, got involved with Contains Art. So it helped set that up. Um, and it continues to this day. Um, and uh, that's what set me on another trajectory. Um, but again, I use my photography here um, for a flyer that, that we um, did for Art Week. Um, so next slide, please. And I went about on my um, photographic odyssey around Watch It, and funny enough, Watch It had read that too. Um, so next slide, please. Um, and so lots of landmarks to photograph. Um, I love photographing things that are decaying, um, unusual totems and things like that. Uh, next slide, please. And um, really got into the boats, but more the boats in the boatyard as opposed to the boats on the water. I like seeing the structure of them and seeing mm. underneath them. And also I was fascinated with the scaffolding and um, the uh, cradles that held them up. And I was very drawn to that. And so I drew it lots and photographed it lots. Um, so next slide, please. Um, and this was a drawing I did over many, many days. So it's actually drawn over and over. So there's lots of different lights and shadows and reflections, all sorts of things crossing over. So um, a very, very long drawing. Um, and that was done after um, I went to some mentoring sessions with John Wealthy, who was that art teacher I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I went back. Mm. Um, for um, some mentoring sessions. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, yeah, so um, still um, interested in David Hockney and um, I did a project um, based on his uh, photographic uh, work that he did. So sort of um, playing with things like cubism with um, photographs and yeah, very much enjoying the cranes down there as well. <laughs> Next slide, please. And um, yeah, signage as well. So um, I, I photographed this sign. I think it's this sign that's being photographed a lot by a lot of people. Um, but um, it really fascinated me. You can't see it on the on this slide, but um, there's quite a bit of Rudy language scratched into it to <laughs> chuckle. Um, Next slide, please. And um, and then I went back and photographed it again. And again, um, and it does change and deteriorate, and we need to see what happens to it. Uh, next slide, please. So this was, um, it's quite hard to see. Um, it's um, dino tape um, that's almost stuck on a pole. And um, it's an intervention okay. that I found um, at Walter's Head um, uh, at a, a sea wall, not at a viewing point, but somewhere further on a sea wall. And it says, um, so the day unfolds, moment by moment, breath by breath. And it does make you stop and it does make you breathe and taking the view. And I thought that, that that was wonderful. But I also think that it's kind of pertinent to now as well. Um, I like that idea. That, that idea stayed with me. Mm. Um, and I like the way it's stuck on a pole. Um, <laughs> next slide, please. More fascination with um, industrial places. Very lucky to be invited into um, the Cord Wandsborough Mill in its last um, operational days. Uh, amazing place. And this is a photograph by Ian Shaw. Um, and uh, that's me painting from life in the mill. Um, and it was a wonderful experience and made quite an impression. Um, so the next slide is the, the final painting. Um, mm. which I hope kind of catches some of the atmosphere of the place. And that's kind of the thing that, that I have done a lot of in the past, painting from life. Um, and then a little diversion, because of the um, 
it being a paper mill and looking into the paper industry, um, I wanted to muck about paper. So the next slide, you can see that um, I am uh, got into some origami and um, took my little origami fox and um, had him posing in different places in the factory, um, likening the idea that um, nature is going to take over this place when it closes down. Mm. Um, so I got quite interested in origami. So the next slide shows, um, I just went a bit mad, man, if I'm origami. <laughs> but, um, I, I made these origami um, ammonites, which are made out of my old geography notes. So if you remember, I told you I did geography. I did a geography degree, including um, geology. And um, so I made um, ammonites um, from my geography, geology notes. Um, but I enjoyed the repetition of them and I made a thousand of them to go in this um, exhibitions cabinet. Um, so, interesting paper, interested in repetition um, and uh, decay mm. and time, deep time. Uh, so the next slide, um, I took the paper idea a bit further and um, I had a, a fly post which I added to over two years and um, eventually um, took it to pieces and had this kind of collage, um, a sort of a modern geology, if you like, made of paper. Um, so, uh, another, uh, we go on to the next slide, please. Um, another, another paper project I did, um, uh, this is called Folk Face. Um, uh, I've ended up working at Halsey Manor. Um, Halsey Manor is the National Centre of Folk Arts and it's based on Quantock Hills and it's a unique place of um, just kind of folk madness really. Mm. It's wonderful. Um, so I worked there and um, I, have, I, put here, I got exposed to dangerous high doses of folk art. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this is the Influence 2 um, and this is based on the very man um, which is a folk character, and it's all made out of um, uh, folk news um, paper. Right, next slide, please. And um, this particular piece has got, it's very faint, you can't see it very well, but it, it's um, four circles, um, and uh, it's been layered in another way. Um, and uh, so sadly, um, my mentor, John Wealthy, um, who uh, was a obsessed circle painter um, and circle dancer, um, he, he died, sadly. And, um, and it's around the sort of time that the paper mill um, shut as well. Um, so, so this is kind of um, a tribute to them. Um, so... Uh, next one, 33, yeah. So, sorry, um, next slide, please. Yeah. So, um, another repetitive photographic project, which I never made anything of, um, sadly, <laughs> cut off in its prime. Someone decided to chop my wonderful tree down. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'm still doing this repetitive photography thing all the time I'm doing these other projects. Uh, next slide, please. Ah, another shade. So, this is another early shade shot. Um, uh, next slide, please. And then um, recently, um, I found myself living at um, John Murphy, my art mentor and teacher, at his house and studio. Um, and so I'm in a, a new place at Stolford, but I'm starting again and starting with painting and exploring. Um, and I just wonder, next slide, please. This is a sculpture by John, um, whether he foretold the future. <laughs> he was a very deep thinker, John, and um, I think he knew what was coming. Wow. Um, so, next slide, please. And this is another one of John's. It's um, uh, almost like an Alfred Wallace-esque piece, but it does have the tacky shades in it. So, John did... Mm -hmm. As well as all of his abstract work, he did do these more sort of, um, recognisable pieces and it's got some tacky shades in. So he, he did recognise them as being interesting too. Um, okay, next slide, please. Um, and of course, I took my iPad out and um, did iPad sketching. Um, this is the Pinkley in the Sunset. 
Next slide, please. Okay, I think we're going to watch some more videos now. Is that right? Uh, does that sound right to you, Alison? Mm. Can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Can you? Sorry, can you hear me? I think we've got some more videos right now. Does that sound right to you in your sequence? Yeah. Perfect. So we're now got to the point where um, I've done my normal painting and drawing. And yeah. Now we're getting into film work. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so um, I'll get those going for you, Alison. <laughs> Hang on a moment, uh, and we're on. To Oops. So here we are. This is um, pre lockdown. Um, this is August last year, um, and um, I called it Stalford Weather Bane. I didn't. It wasn't the report then. Um, so this is my first one. Um, and uh, so we can go next one, please, Richard. Yep. Um, and this is the next one, which was in November. So there's a quite big gap, August to November. Um, but it's a mad day that day. We had rainbows and horizontal rain. Wow. It was extraordinary. Um, and um, this is the first time I called it Stogwood Weather Report. Um, mm. Wow. The next one, please. Um, and this one, I think it's about this time, this is 30th of November, because um, I'm always putting these up on Instagram. This is the first time I got um, a sort of an exchange, a conversation going. So people like things and you see that people are looking. But this is the first one where I actually got conversation going. And um, uh, uh, Jane Hood, artist friend of mine, um, asked me what the shades were. And um, with someone who doesn't know, they look very odd, um, mm. surreal even. Um, so I told her they were tacky shades mm. um, for measuring pollution. Right. Uh, so next sketch, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, okay, so uh, we're back onto you again. Uh, so, yeah, we're back onto some slides now. Uh, just give me a moment. Um, and yeah, so this is um, an iPad, not an iPad, an iPhone sketch. So um, now I'm exploring the Stolford part of the peninsula. Um, I'm going out with my iPhone and sketching directly on that. Um, so they're very quick, um, expressive sketches. Um, and that's uh, Brent Knoll in the background, which to me looks a bit like Mount Fuji. Mm. Uh, so next slide, please. Oh, and I got, I got a bit distracted by some geology. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the whole of our coast, all the way from here, right down to... Um, kill watch it and beyond we have the most extraordinary geology and um amount of fossils and um my neighbor at stolford um john godspill um found this extraordinary fossil and um and i was involved in um getting geckoella um, a local geology and ecology company to um uh, work with um, the museum, Som Somerset um, Museum, to um, extract this because it is, is really uh, special. And it is a fossil of an ichthyosaurus, which is a sea dragon. Um, and uh, and this is how keen people are to, to get this into the museum and to, to protect it from the tide and everything because it was just going to get destroyed. Um, this is us out there on Boxing Day. This Boxing Day just gone. This is what we were up to. <laughs> wow. So next next slide, please. And so I drew it um, in my way. And um, uh, this drawing is now in my exhibition, um, My Somerset, uh, it's called, um, which is at the Somerset Royal Life Museum in Glastonbury. Um, which is kind of locked in. Uh, so it went up before lockdown and it's stuck <laughs> there now. <laughs> um, 
Um, so I don't know when I'm going to get it back. Uh, it's a bit of a shame because people can't see it. Um, but um, who knows? We'll, we'll see. Um, uh, so next slide, please. And that's the, the flyer from the exhibition. Um, mm -hmm. The next slide, please. Okay, we're going to see some more of your videos, I oh, think, now. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, if I can hide that one. And that one. Right, so this is a pre-lockdown film um, of the Salford Weather Report. Um, and it shows the seagulls flying past. And they do, they kind of um, are on their way to Hickley. They, they fly past and um, go to Hinkley uh, for a warm up. Um, so this is 17th of February. Uh, next one, please. Um, although this is on Instagram on the same day, this is actually, there's a day between these two. So I haven't quite got my system sorted yet or really know what I'm doing with it. It's all a bit ad hoc. Um, but you can see even within the day, the, the differences in the conditions out there. Mm. Um, so, uh, but I'm st sticking to about, about 30 seconds for each one because um, the upload times to Instagram and the uh, mm. memory on the phone and everything. Mm. Um, but it's enough really to get the sense of, of the place. So next one, please. Uh, this is also pre-lockdown, um, and that's the 26th of February. I started experimenting with sort of different um, camera angles and things like that, um, and uh, really looking quite hard at the structure of them because I, I just think they're really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and different times of day as well. This one's just at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. On the next one, please. Now, this is the 3rd of March now. Um, I call this one Stalford Weather Report. And um, getting a bit more interest now on Instagram. Um, we're up to 78 views now. So I was quite pleased with that. Um, uh, so thinking maybe maybe I'm onto something here. Maybe this is something that resonates with people. Yeah. They're curious about it. Want to know a bit more, maybe. Um, the next one, please. Um, I don't know about that one. <laughs> 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 you see, the, the repetition is starting to happen now, so they're all starting to look kind of similar-ish and, um, uh, it's quite interesting the way they, they the shades rotate as well and how they bobble about. Mm. Um, the next one, please. Okay, we're back onto some of your slides now, I think. Uh, so let me just set that up. Um, ah, right. So at this point, I hadn't settled on the shades being the Salford Red Weather Report. Um, I also quite like this. This is a weather vane. This is um, one of John's sculptures. Uh, this is a rather handsome fish that's mounted on the um, roof. Um, so I also photographed the fish and called that Stolford Weather Report. Mm. Um, so next slide, please. Um, and still, I was going out sketching. So this is um, a, a pre-lockdown sketch. Um, it's got a seawall in it, and it's got a power station, and Big Carl the Crane. I like Big Carl the Crane. Um, <laughs> next slide, please. And this is a view across to Steep Home, so you, you quite clearly see Steep Home um, at Stalford. And um, wonderful plants and a lichen and things like that. Mm. Next slide, please. And this is my last um, painting with painting materials um, outside before um, pandemic um, restrictions came in. Um, so this is what I would normally normally do, um, watercolour, brush pen, um, and it's painted on the scene outside. Um, mm. uh, next slide, please. 
And um, this is, we're in lockdown now, um, but the pylon is um, within my cycling range from Stalford. So um, for my permitted exercise, I, I did a bike ride out to the pylon and photographed it to continue on my project. Mm. Um, so I was quite pleased with that with high tide and um, looking, looking green and lush. Mm. Um, so next slide, please. Okay, it's a few more videos now, I, I believe. Oh, another film. All Great. right, so just give me a moment. Uh... So this should be um, the 23rd of March. So now um, we're properly well into it now. Um, and... Uh, a lot of the the, photos, the films I've taken don't show Hinkley, um, but I did with this one because it was just it looked great that day. Um, and this is the first one on Instagram that I hashtagged as um, hashtag isolation. And it's also when I started filming or photographing every day, and I pretty much in my mind made up that this was going to be my little ritual. Mm. I didn't know it was going to be an art project necessarily, but these permitted walks I was going to do every day. Um, I, walk, I walk most days anyway, but um, I, I kind of made a little commitment to myself that I was going to do this. Uh, so next one, please. I did it a lot and um, started getting a bit bored with it, really. So I, <laughs> I um, started experimenting with different formats. And this is um, a film with the film. <laughs> 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 also actually um it my hand was forced because i started having problems in my tech too so um so this is the thing um i was in isolate isolated um it's not like i could pop into the engine room and get some help at this point it's <laughs> like you know you're on your own <laughs> um so uh yeah so it's very much kind of make do and mend really mm. um next one please And another film of the fish. So this is the 26th of March. It's looking a bit cold. Um, what can I say about this one? The fish was quite well liked, actually. Mm. Um, I could have carried on with the fish and carried on with the shades, but I got to the point where I thought, no, I've got, I've got to stick to one thing to make, maybe to make things more manageable, I don't know. Yeah. And next one, please. Um... Don't have any notes about that one. That's okay. Um, <laughs> what I like about these shades is I like the simple structure of them. Um, so I've started playing with um, uh, trying to make some of my own um, mm -hmm. to work, trying to work out whether they're based on real lampshades or not. I don't know. <laughs> Next one, please. Okay. We're back onto some of your slides now, Alison. Uh, yeah. Just give me a moment. Ah, right, so, um, yeah, starting to get a bit fed up with um, uh, just doing the same film all, over and over again. So um, uh, I did keep the same films going. Um, so I've got those in the can. I've got those in my archive if I want to do anything with them late, at a later date. But the, the, the thing with the Instagram and the interaction I was getting with people um, was taking on its own life. And um, I, it was almost like I was starting to entertain people. I was entertaining myself, actually, keeping my spirits up, because this was that sort of period at the end of March was pretty gloomy, really. Um, so just trying to keep spirits up. So I started to introduce some other things into the, the, the photographs or films. And, um, and uh, yeah, so this is a, a little cheeky nod to... Um, the artist Chris Dobrowolski, who um, came to see us at Contains Art, and um, he puts toys in his work sometimes. Mm. Um, and also, this is a gift. This little horse was a gift from Jill Newton, the illustrator. 
Um, so that's a hello to Jill. She's watching too. Um, so to start to have a bit of fun with it, but also playing with perspective. I quite like that. Mm. Um, so actually, um, I did this on one of my bike rides. So this is actually balanced on my bicycle seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, and then I decided I'd try to do some serious art. And um, uh, this is spurred on by um, Grayson Perry's programme. Um, I thought I'd try and enter something for the portrait themed one. And um, I drew over one of my portraits, self portrait. Um, uh, <laughs> it's a bit scary and a bit <laughs> serious. So I think that's why. <laughs> it didn't get on the program, but yeah, not to worry. But it did make me go into the studio and it did make me think about, about making art. But then I realised, well, hang on, I'm doing that anyway mm. with the, the filming. Um, uh, next one, please. And then I had to play with some origami um, and try to have a go at an origami mask, um, which is actually... <laughs> the construction of it is too efficient and uh, you can't actually breathe. <laughs> it's it's really, really fits your face well, but you can't breathe. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so back to the um, films. And uh, I don't know whether I was having a breakdown, but the films just got more bizarre. Um, so 1st of May, um, yeah. Can you get the sound up on this one? Yeah. Um, Based on the Pikehead um, Sailor's Hobby Horse, um, and it's doing a dance around the shades. Um, and the, the music is uh, accordion that um, John had in his studio, which I played and recorded. And um, it's bonkers, and, and that's the whole <laughs> point of this hobby horse, it's completely bonkers. Um, the hobby horse did actually go out on um, May Day. They had to get special permission to go out, but of course they didn't have an audience. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they did do. I think they did do the streets of Minehead and um, did their um, springtime ritual. Um, and uh, yeah, it's um, pretty bonkers. Uh, <laughs> but that was lots of fun and um, got lots of attention on Instagram. Um, so next one, please. So back back to the gloom again. <laughs> just suffering from my art here. I got absolutely soaked on this day. Um, and uh, wasn't sure whether I should try and do cheery ones all the time or um, stick to, to what's there. Um, but if you don't have the, the gloomy ones, then you don't enjoy the cheery ones so much. <laughs> um, so the next one after this um, was a chance one. So again, I just set up a camera and little Mr. Fly came past and did this like crazy loop the loop. <laughs> and you'll play it again, it was just brilliant. But sometimes I do, I make the little films and sometimes I just see what's gonna happen when I'm out there, um, which is a bit of fun. Mm. Um, so next one, please. Uh, yeah, so the, this, um, I got a, a parcel came through the post of um, funny little gifts from my niece and nephew, uh, including this little pig. And uh, so I thought I'd use it in my film. And um, this film is uh, a homage to the Pink Floyd um, pig. Um, and I did try and do another one with the Pink Floyd pig, or my pretend Pink Floyd pig. Um, going over the power station because of course in the, on the Pink Floyd album Animals the pig goes over Battersea power station mm. um, but uh, yeah it didn't work I might I might try that again <laughs> another time it's, it, it's, I like the idea of it but for this for the, the shades I think it's quite a, a nice little kind of surreal spectacle mm. so that was lots of fun and got lots of comments um, for people like that so next one. But right, this is a departure from the Stolford weather report. This is the Stolford traffic report. <laughs> uh, so I literally saw this um, snail outside my house and 
got my funny little horse and thought, well, let's do something. But I didn't, I didn't want to interfere with the snail, so I, I didn't move the snail or touch it. So I just, I just put the horse down to see what it would do, <laughs> and, it, and it walked around it. And um, and at that time on the news, they were going on about um, travelling and of restrictions so I'll put that little hashtag essential travel only at the end <laughs> um, so that was um, a mixture of me intervening and letting nature take its course which is a bit fun mm. next one please okay I think we're back on to a few more slides um, another slide uh... oh so later on in lockdown they eased the restrictions a bit on um stay uh being out and about um so I, I felt a little bit more easy about sketching outside um so this is my first sketch during lockdown next mm. slide a uh, little video next i think uh, oh. um. and back to the simple sort of films again um on this one on facebook um <laughs> my dad um made a comment um is this a tweet which i thought was um very funny <laughs> um but actually if you do have the sound right up if you do get a chance to listen to it on instagram the, the birds and i think a lot of people commented about the birds and um, the bird noises in the background are incredible mm. um next one please okay i think we're on to a slide again back to sketch So again, this is a, a sketch across um, Bridgewater Bay to Brent Knoll and the Mendips. And uh, I just really enjoyed the colours and the, the cumulus clouds there. Um, so that was a joy. And um, uh, and then there's a sequence of another two sketches. Um, we just flick through those quickly. Um, gosh, that's amazing. Oh, and this one, um, oh, I've called, as I said, this is like super nature. Um, if you listen to this on the Instagram or whatever and, and whack the volume up, um, it's almost a deafening row, not from the power station construction, but from um, some kind of warbler. <laughs> There's some kind of bird in the hedge there. It's the belting it out. And it was really, really amazing. Um, but that's the thing, is you're filming the shades, but you're, you're also filming what's around it as well, inadvertently. Um, mm. And um, yeah, there's this bird giving it some. Um, next one, please. Okay. Um. All right, so back to the sketches again. Um, so these are actually sketches from the studio window. So I wasn't going out sketching at this point, but um, back to sketching from the studio. So I'm getting the sketchy mojo back a bit now. Mm. Um, and if you flick through these next three, I think. Oh, they're lovely. And the next. Um, So the next film coming up um, is The Rain Dance. Um, and um, <laughs> uh, this is my most popular one to date, I think. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's The Rain Dance, uh, complete with um, my take on Navajo music. Um, and I got 98 views for that one. And um, <laughs> A lot of people thought it was really funny. Um, it's actually really tiring. I know I've edited it for me to go round and round. I think I went round and round twice. And, uh, it's quite tiring. Um, that's the next one. Uh, all right, so this one. Um, uh, I got a comment on my Instagram um, about the Solver Brother Report from an account called Crimpology, and I think that that, that is um, to do with um, Noel Field, Building and Julian Barrett, um, Mighty Boosh, um, 
and they, they liked the weather report. Um, so I very cheekily wrote back to them and um, we had a, a discussion for half an hour or so. It probably isn't them, it's probably their publicity people, but it was still a bit of fun. And uh, they thought it was funny that um, a weather report should be relevant when um, people are being told to stay indoors. Mm. So I said, well, maybe I'll do a special report from the bathroom then. And I sent them this sketch of the report from the bathroom. <laughs> um, so it shows a cloud, a very unhappy cloud, raining over the toilet. And I said, um, there was depression in the bathroom. Mm. So that was that. Uh, next one, please. Yeah, another video. Oh, another video. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, kites. Yes. I do have a bit of a passion for kites. And so I made some kites. And these are origami kites. And um, again, they make do amend for what you've just got up lying around. I, I cut up, um, I got a, a calendar um, of Lichtenstein paintings. So I ch chopped it up and made kites out of it. I quite like the, the idea of my Lichtenstein paintings flying around. <laughs> um, so that was uh, a nod to Lichtenstein and um, the kite flying. Um, so next one, please. It's a subject drawing. So I'm back out sketching it again when I'm doing my walks. Um, and this is a, a really weird little bridge near the house, um, which I'm definitely going to go back and paint some more because it's uh, really interesting. Uh, next one, please. And uh, yeah, this is, um, I put this up for Salford Weather Report. This is um, uh, a still photograph, but um, it's a composite and it's in the style of um, Hockney's uh, big composite mm. to did um, uh, paint uh, photographs, yeah. um, which I think is really interesting. And um, I did do some more but um, they take ages to put together, but mm. that'll keep, that's another project in the future. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, next one, um, I did a digital painting of the shades um, on the iPhone. Um, that's 15th of May, so we, we're, we're coming along now. Um, uh, next one, please. Yeah, a couple of videos, I think, Alison. Um, so, so this next one is made with um, a reducing lens. Um, this is a, a reducing lens that I found in John's studio, and I'm sure it's he used to bring it into school um, to show us. Um, and it makes things smaller. Um, someone joked on Instagram and said that I've been using taking my glasses apart. <laughs> Um, so uh, I like the idea, again, it's like the reversing camera that I showed earlier of mm. looking through things with different lenses. Mm. Maybe I'm interested in that because I am a glasses wearer, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I quite like that. Um, and then the next one is a, co a kaleidoscopic lens, but it's just a filter on, um, on the smartphone, but I really love it. Um, so a kaleidoscope effect. Um, It's rather beautiful and I like the floralness of it, or like a snowflake. So we're nearly there. Okay. Um, and the next is a sketch again. Um, so when I went to, to, to photograph the shades, um, I noticed um, there was a boat I wanted to photograph in the background. Um, and it was too far away, but I was hoping that it would come back down Bristol Channel and I could see it clearer. So I hung around on that one, and I think, where are we now? Yeah, we're at that stage in lockdown where, um, oh, it's time. Time's <laughs> run out. Um, yeah, so I did a, a sketch whilst I was waiting for the boat to come back, um, and it didn't come back, but so I was quite, quite pleased with this drawing that I did. Mm. Next one, please. Okay, I think this is your final so video, one, Alison. Um, is uh, you've got to kind of hang with it really. It's my last silly film, um, and it kind of <laughs> sums up um, the rural location and it's not taking stuff too seriously. But you have to wait for it. Um, 
I cut like the idea that some people on Instagram, if it doesn't happen quickly enough, they'd have gone. <laughs> you hang on it and there you go. <laughs> well, you won. And there's another one. <laughs> so that's welly wanging, of which I did win a certificate for once. The village fit. Um, so I think that's it now, isn't it? It is. No, that's all of your images, um, Alison. Um, let's, let's get us back up. There you go. There's you, and hey. there's me. Fantastic. Um, I need to look that way so it looks like I'm looking at you. So. <laughs> Uh, a lot of images and um, a lot of kind of serious stuff and fun stuff and a real range of material um, and, a lot of, and a lot of material as well. I'll just share with you some of our comments that Sue uh, Lowe said there are so many layers to this. Steve Clark said we should fly a pig over Hinkley Point. Um, and uh, Trina said brilliant to hear the thread of how all these ideas and projects lead into one another. Um, Rachel, when you commented on how you, one of your artworks is in lockdown, uh, Rachel said, uh, couldn't the museum curators do some kind of virtual tour? Um, Fiona actually asked a specific question. There's lots of really interesting observations. Fiona Campbell asked, can you explain a bit more about how the shades actually work to measure pollution, if you know the answer? Um, so in terms of their real purpose. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're constructed with a um, special sticky um, muslin, I think. Mm. And they um, collect particulate matter. So any solids in the air will stick to it. Mm. Um, I'm surprised I've never seen any insects. Either stuck in yeah. it but um yeah it, it's designed to, to collect um whatever is in the air and then that's tested for pollution um so it's a pollution monitor right okay so uh, i've got a few quick questions for you alison um for you to sort of uh think about and give us a response and and if anybody watching uh has a comment or a question they'd specifically like to ask Alison about her th the themes that she works with or or her process then just put it in a comment um, but I was particularly interested in that idea of how artists operate in lockdown so I've got a few questions around that really so um, Turner Prize winning artist Keith Tyson has just launched Isolation Art School on Instagram which is your medium as well um, and the aim is to be a hub for projects, lessons and tips by artists to help people get creative whilst housebound. Uh, do you see potential in social media, specifically on Instagram, as a means of engaging people in the life and work of artists and also to find their own creativity too? Well, I really struggled to hear that because the birds here now, the sparrows are going mental. <laughs> it's a shame because um, it's a great question. I mean, re really, do you, do you think that um, um, during the past eight weeks, has social media for artists and for you, Instagram, has it has it become apparent what it's actually for, <laughs> do you, if you know what I mean, within your practice? Yeah, and I think... Um, What's interesting is that um, uh, John Wealthy, um, where his house I live in, um, he was um, was one of the first people. He started Somerset Art Week, so he had this idea that um, uh, that people should be invited into the artist's studio to demystify what what they do and how they practice, yeah. and um, and anyone could could go. Um, doesn't matter. You know, whether you could afford it or not, it's free. Yeah. Um, and now um, we have this digital way of doing it. So it's almost like um, an open studio online. You can let, you, if you want to, you can let people into the studio um, or into your thoughts. You know, mm. your um, especially with blogging, and it's almost like um, uh, a constant thought process that is visible to whoever wants to, to, to look at it mm. um, 
So, and it's it's free and it's open and anyone can look. And but also you can interact as well. So um, mm. you 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 can meet all sorts of people and talk about and exchange ideas. Mm. Very democratic. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, so another um, something for you to muse upon. Uh, so Anthony Gormley, uh, I, I was just read a quote from Anthony Gormley on lockdown. He states, most of us live our lives in ridiculous obligation to a machine that is always telling us to do more, have more, go to more places, make more money. This is a wonderful time in which those imperatives are loosened and we have to ask ourselves, what do we care about? What do we value? And what do we love? And I just wondered what your response to that statement was. Yeah, well, I think um, um, it's kind of what I was looking for anyway. I think I was having mentoring sessions with John and with um, mm. Stuart Geddes as well. And um, uh, we kind of we grow up with this idea that, um, that we have to pay the bills. Yes. Um, but... Um, it gets very difficult sometimes that work balancing that 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 life work balance and um, uh, and I, I became very successful at the commercial arts as well um, and selling it um, but then it stops you from playing mm. and I think that's that's really important for artists to play yeah um, that is kind of what we do it's like that Picasso the famous Picasso quote isn't it. Um, I can't remember it's word for word, but yeah. it's about becoming a child again. Um, yeah. And I think that at the moment, because you can't, you can't go to well, a lot of us can't go to work, um, uh, and we, we can't spend our money on anything either. We're in this weird kind of run hold. Yeah. But it gives us the the release to to um, let the art flow. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine a more inclusive and fairer environment and society um, for, for artists uh, when we get to the, to the other side of this? Yeah, I do think, um, um, yeah, it doesn't matter who you are, does it, really? Mm. We're all, all, be, all being affected by this. Mm. And, um, uh, yeah, the rules are the same, aren't they? Or should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we've got uh, Sue. Sue Lowe's just uh, commented. Um, have you decided on an end point for the weather reports? Oh, good question. <laughs> I, I was uh, thinking about that today, actually. I always said that I'd stop it when lockdown was lifted. But we don't really know how that's going to happen yet, whether it's going to be in stages or whether it's going to suddenly end. Um, and uh, I, I don't think it will be a sudden end because it wasn't a sudden start. No. And, and I think I probably will do a Stonewood weather report, say, a year down the line. But I don't think I would do it every day. No. Um, uh, and I think it's almost a bit like... Um, what? Faulty Towers is such a good programme. Has it only, <laughs> only ever had one series? Right, you know, it's like I don't. You didn't want to over egg it, and I think that's what I learned with the cows. I did the cows for ten years. I sort of stopped after two. <laughs> are you in? Are you currently in a sort of reflective mode? You know, it's been eight weeks of lockdown. Have you had time to go revisit your archives? I mean, you've done it this this evening with us, um, but have you been using that time to revisit your work, discover new meaning, new significance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do think that, um, I, I think this has probably happened to quite a few people in mm. that when, when you have this reflective time and you're going through your archives um, and your mind's a bit freer as well, you notice old projects and you think, oh, actually, that was really good and I never followed it up. Yeah. And, that, and I think now's the time to um, uh, dig them up and um, maybe give them another go or turn them into something new. Um mm. Yeah, definitely very reflective and, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, what comes out of it. Really. Yeah. Uh, Trina's just mentioned on Facebook, 
um, absolutely loved hearing the explanations behind pieces um, that I've been looking at for years. Uh, really fascinating. What a great cataloging of your work. Um, so we've got people watching who are very familiar with your work, but it's been great to hear you um, talk about them. Um, and Tracy's just mentioned uh, Tracy Roberts. Thank you. Hello, Tracy. Uh, Alison, your films have been a highlight of lockdown. So that's pretty good. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> um, so um, that's one more question, I think. Uh, your work's repetitious. Uh, and we see the same object photographed over and over again. And we see grids. Uh, we chatted about this earlier on today. And we had a little chat about... Um, the Dusseldorf School of Photography and photographing symmetrical buildings and, and similar looking buildings and putting them into grids. So clearly repetition is important to you. Is that an innate sort of interest? Yeah, um, I, have, I have used the repetitive thing before, but again it's like that saying about finding the projects in the archive that might be re revived. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, there's lots of reasons. What one that's really interesting is that um, doing something repetitively is actually really good for your mental health. And um, uh, so, going out for these regular walks, I think, was really important. Um, mm. And having a ritual was really important. Yeah. Um, and I also think it, it's um, important for learning as well. Is um, I sometimes think um, I've got into a bit of a groove with the painting, and I, I wasn't learning anymore and um, so it, it's repetition's good for learning um yeah. and that rhythm and i think living living out at stalford or on the coast there you're very aware of the rhythm of tides and moon and sun cycles and all that kind of stuff um and um and i, I talked about um uh getting interested in music again Mm. And again, to, to get good at it, you've got to keep doing it and doing it and, doing it and repeating, repeating, repeating. Yeah. And so I don't think there's anything wrong. It, people are always a bit boring, but it's <laughs> um, it's important, I think, for your brain. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Alison. Um, it's been really interesting, and it's been lovely to hear all the birds around you as well. Um, at times, the, they were the noisiest birds I've ever heard, but really fantastic. There was, one, there was one image that you sent me earlier that you didn't ask me to put in, but it's the um, just just be aware of the fact if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube that I think are you connecting to us via a mobile phone, Alison, or or do you actually have some Wi-Fi? What tonight? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm literally this. This here is um, uh -huh. there's a patio window, right? <laughs> and I'm I'm having I'm pinching my parents' Wi-Fi. Fantastic. So um, <laughs> my vulnerables have allowed me to pinch their Wi-Fi for the evening. Oh, my my internet's down at home, of course, <laughs> as luck would have it. Well, um, so yeah, so um, <laughs> much, much thanks to your vulnerables, then. <laughs> yeah, <bless them. laughs> uh, you, you've really pulled out the stops to, to, to connect with the creative network. Um, we you did send me an image, you've got it there behind you, just in case it all failed. Um, you, you sent me this fantastic image that I'm just sharing <laughs> with, with, with the, the, the viewers. Uh, really? so you really thought of everything, so um, thank you so much for that. and. Uh, we'll sign off there, I think, now. Thanks, Alison. Um, oh, thanks for everyone who tuned in on this lovely evening. Yeah, Thank I mean, you. I've been checking yeah. checking this out on uh, Facebook and you, you've had a really good number of people, some really interesting comments. Um, the last one, just in from Fiona Campbell. That was so interesting. Love your weather report project. Thank you. So that's, I think that's a thank you from everybody. Oh, uh, no. So we, we'll sign off there now and... Um, no doubt, Alison, uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. In, in real life, hopefully. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.